we gather the requirements of the user? Is it project manager will go and look for the stakeholders and find the requirement? So who? Oh, system analyst. Okay? System analyst. Okay, they are the one who will go and look for the stakeholders, find the users and gather the requirement. Okay? So in here, one of the advantage, okay, one of the benefit, okay, of the of this architecture design here is the system analyst, okay, can check whether the system can meet the requirement of the stakeholders or not. Okay? So just now, just now we have the benefit, the stakeholders among, among the stakeholders they get a benefit, okay, because they can brainstorm together. It's not only one user, we have many users of the system, right? So they can sit and they can brainstorm together and then we can gather the requirements. Okay, and the next benefit here is to the system analyst itself. Okay, they can check. Okay, other than that, large scale reuse. Okay, when we talk about the large scale reuse here is the architecture may be reusable or recycled. Okay, reusable or recycled across the, across the system. For example, Let's say if you're going to uh, enhance the system, the system A is already exists and people are using, and you're going to enhance the system B, okay? It's not necessary that you have to come out with all a brand new, okay? There are some functions, for example, in your assignment also, right? You are not going to, you are not going, you are creating some modules and some new modules, but there are some existing modules which you are which you are reusing back isn't it okay you're not 100 percent developing the model okay you there are some uh, minor components or minor sub modules that you add on okay so that is we call it a reusable okay so when we use this technique which is the architecture design okay when we come up with this blueprint so we will know okay which components or which functions that we can reuse it back in the new system which is we cannot we cannot use it back in the new system which we have to anyhow we have to come up with the new functions so this is one of the advantage also okay of the architectural design all right okay reusable architecture okay so this is the advantages i have already explained you can read this Okay, the next one is negotiation. Okay, negotiation is between the stakeholders. Because, for example, uh, I'm the lecturer, okay, uh, I have my own perspective about the, or I have my own uh, requirements, okay, expectations about the system. Okay, I am a maybe, uh, uh, I'm an IT lecturer, okay, and there's another lecturer, business lecturer. Okay, IT lecturer, business lecturer. Okay, but we are all in the same domain but in a different faculty, okay? So, when I want the system to be, of course, uh, in my point of view, I want everything to be IT-based, right? Okay, because I'm IT lecturer, so I want these other things, which the business lecturer, they are not using it or they are not familiar with. So, in this case, we can have the negotiation. So, I can give my justification to them, to the business lecturer. Okay, I want this function to be added in this system. Okay, so we can negotiate. Okay, so in here the negotiation will be taken place. Okay, so which we can add, which we can drop, okay, all that. Okay, so this is one of the advantage. Okay, you can see there's a lot of advantages, okay, with the uh, architectural design process. Okay. Next is a complexity management. Okay, this is an essential, okay, it can be act as an essential tools, okay, for the complexity, very complicated. For example, like in a software process model, we have the spiral model, right, spiral model, all that is we use it for the complex project. Okay, for your assignment, I think you won't face this problem because your assignment is not very complexity assignments all that. It's very easy, but anyhow people are suffering. I don't know why. Okay. 
Okay, just imagine if you have uh, you're working very high risk project. I don't know. Okay, this is very simple. Okay, so this one is let's say it involves. Okay, this is very useful. Let's say if your project is a high risk project. Okay, so high risk project. This architecture design is very useful. Okay. So this is others. Okay, so far we can see we have five advantages. Okay, so which I've already explained. Next, next is the architecture design activity. So what are the activities involved in the architecture design? Just now we talk about the benefit or that, right? Okay, now what are the activities? Okay. So the first activity is a system organization or structuring. Okay. Okay, so when we talk about the system organization and structuring, okay, yeah. So this is the uh, definitions of the system organization. Okay, so system organization basically is a structure into a number of principal subsystems. Okay, so subsystem is an independence of the units. Okay, so this is where the communication between the subsystem will be identified. Okay, so in here. When we talk about the system organization and structuring, basically we have three. Okay, so we have three ways. Okay, three widely used system organization and modeling. So the first one is a repository. Uh, second one is a client server model, and the third one is a layer model. Okay, but the most uh, famous. Okay, the most famous is a repository and client okay layer is very rare people using it okay but anyhow we're going to discuss okay so when we talk about the repository when you look at this diagram what you what you can understand this image it look like what topology star topology does it look like a star topology? Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Or it look like a ring topology? Star star. Or bus topology? Star topology. So what is the what is the characteristic of star topology? Centralized. Centralized. Centralized data. That means we can share, right? So among these nodes, okay, we have a few nodes over here. So it can share the she can share it can share the data among the nodes. Okay. So this is called as a repository model. Okay. That means you have the central database. Okay, the example that I can give you. Okay, now uh, okay, uh Vota UMT we have a few branches, right? We have in Cal Para or that. Okay, and we do, okay, even though each campus, okay, each campus we have the, uh, we have the, what we call, um, uh, server room, server, okay, each campus they have a server, okay, but to connect, to connect all the six branches, we have a main server. Okay, let's say if for, for example suddenly the KL branch server is doesn't work. Doesn't work. Okay, but the staff in KL branch, they still can retrieve the data from the main server. Okay, so in here the main server, okay, you can see the black, okay, the black circle right in the center. Uh, that is a main server we can see as a central database and all the round here is called as a nodes. Nodes here it could be your PC, it could be your tab, it could be anything. Okay? So which we can share the data among. 
sharing the data, exchange the data. Okay, so this is called as a repository model. Okay, so if your system, when you're developing your system, if your system is okay, how are you going to structure? How are you going to structure? Okay, then how are you going to design the system? This all is internal. Internal. Okay, what are the internal process? Okay, what are the internal things that, that the system can do? Okay, how are you going to organize? How are you going to share the data? How are you going to exchange the data? Okay, how are you going to use the data? Okay? So, when can you use? Okay, if you are decided, if you are decided to use the repository model, so you can simply use. Okay, there is some things that you need to consider. Okay, the first thing here is, is that you have a large amount of data to be shared or to be exchanged? Okay, is that your, your company, you have a, a very big branches or many branches? Or you only have one company? If one company, if you want to use the repository model, if not advisable. It's not advisable because you only have one office and you only have a set of numbers of staff. And why you want to use the repository model? Okay? So... The repository model, you can use something like a bank. Repository is something like a bank. Okay, you can store the data inside. So whenever you want, then you can get it back. So if you want to use a repository, make sure that you have a large amount of data. Okay, which you can store. So whenever you want, you can retrieve it back. Or you can exchange among others. Okay? Okay, you can see here, repository subsystem need to exchange data. Alright? Okay? So, the, okay, the, the, it can be done in two ways. One is, uh, the all the shared data is held in a central database, which I say that's not the main server. Okay? Or each subsystem can maintain their own database, and then they can exchange the data by passing the message. So there's a two method they can use. Either you store the data in the main or you can store the data in your own. Okay, then whenever your neighbor asks, then you can exchange. Or you can store in the main, then you can directly get from there. Also can two ways. Two ways you can use the repository model. Okay? Okay, remember when to use the repository model if we have a large amount of data to be shared. Okay, then you can think of using the repository model. Okay? Okay, so the advantages all you can, you can study. Okay, it's normally we use it for the large amount of centralized sharing. Okay? There's a disadvantage here is uh, the subsystem must act, uh, must agree for the repository data model. Okay, there is no compromise here. And the data evaluation is difficult and expensive. Okay, no scope specific management. And uh, it is difficult to distribute efficiently. Okay, uh, you can expect very fast. It depends on the number of people you are using it. Okay, so there is some disadvantages also. Okay, next client server. Okay, what is client server? Client server model. Client server model, or we can call it as a standalone model. What is standalone? Example? Uh, what is client server model or standalone? 
It doesn't depends to anyone. Doesn't depends. Okay. So for example, uh, I have a PC. Uh, I have a printer. Okay. Then I type something. Then I print out. Okay. That means. <laughs> okay. Which means that. When I type something my PC, when I print that, I'm not depend to anything. I'm not depend to any centralized database. I'm not depend to anything. Okay, whatever that I type in my PC, I just print out. Okay, stand and load. Client server model. Client server model. Okay, I do the stuff, I take I take it. Okay, I'm not going to share i'm not going to retrieve from anyone no no i'm not depend to anything okay so that is standalone or client server model okay understood okay you can see a set a set of standalone server okay which provide specific services like you can as i told you just now you can print the documents you can manage the data okay you type your the file you save it in your pc you no need to share to anybody okay whenever you want you go to the folder then you can open the folder then you can modify understand what is so funny your window <laughs> Okay, so that is the client server. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is how. Okay. This one you guys remember, huh? Okay. The uh, what we call the um, for the wait, wait, uh, for especially for the client server. Okay. For the client server model. Okay. So this is the architecture. Okay. This is the how the architecture look like. Okay. You can see the wide bandwidth network okay then you have the client one client two client three client four client is your pc or yourself okay and then each client they have their own work okay to do okay which is you are not depend you're not depend to any others okay you do your work okay you store it then you can take it back that's it okay so this is the client server model okay so the advantages here is the distribution is straightforward Okay, as I told you, straightforward. Okay, it's not going to come from anywhere. Okay, it's not going to come out from anywhere. Okay, because you save your documents in your PC, you will really take from the PC. You're not going to take from anybody or from anywhere. Okay, straightforward. Okay, next is it's a cheaper because this one you can set in a, a LAN local area network. Okay, uh, it's not it's not very costly also. Okay. And then it's easy to add and upgrade the server. Okay? The disadvantages uh, is inhibitions of data sharing because uh, you cannot share any data. Okay, that is one, one of the uh, disadvantages. And redundant management. Okay, redundant management because many people will do that. Okay? And no central register. Okay, like the repository, we have a central management, but in here we don't have. Okay, so that is a disadvantage. Okay. Okay, the next one is a layer model. Okay, just now uh, it's a repository, client, now it's layer model. Okay, layer model, why is layer model? Because as you can see here, I show you. Okay, so this is how we look back. But this layer model is not fixed. It depends on what type of system that you're going to develop. For example, this system is called as a version management system. In a version management system, so these are the layers. Okay? Let's say in your LMS, you have a different layers. Okay? I'll give you one example of one function, eh? okay, which is uh, Gmail, your email. Okay, your email. Okay, so when you want to create an email function, so what are the layers? What are the layers involved? Okay, this layers. I'm keep telling you, this layer is not a fix. It's not a fixed layer. 
it depends on what type of system or what type of functions or what type of module that is going to develop. Okay, different system, different module, different uh, sub-modules all have different layers. Okay, so in here I give you one example of the email as I told you. Okay, you can copy down. Okay, so this is the Gmail uh, or email also can whatever. Okay, so how many layers and what are the layers? We have five layers, uh, one, two, three, four, five layers. Okay, so the first one is the UI layers, user interface layers. Okay, which it can display the screen, right? Okay, throughout the screen, okay, in the screen. So, we can have the, all the functions, okay, you can see all the menus, okay, all those stuff. So, the UI layer. And then the next one is a functional layer. Okay, functional layer. Okay, functional layer, it will describe how the system works. Okay, next is the business rule layer. Okay, this is about the business rules. Okay, for example, uh, we have the, remember that we study about the external organization policies, all that. Okay. Next is the application core layer. Okay, which is the main programs, okay, the main programs or modules or the uh, other sub-programs, uh, sub-programs or sub-modules communication. Okay, how we communicate. Next is the database layer. Okay. So, database layer, normally we have the tables, okay, um, we do have the index, okay, we have the class, right, okay, we have a class, all that, okay, so this is the database, okay, so when you see here, uh, when you see the layers in the slide and the layer which I draw, two different layers. It's not the same. It depends on what type of system. What type of system, what type of module that you are going to work. It's not fixed. It's not fixed. Okay? Understood? Okay? So, in here you can see for the version a management system, they have a configuration, they have object, they have data, but database, uh, database layers, probably all the system they have. Okay? Database layers, probably all the system they have. That there will be one of the layers called database layer for all the systems. That, as you can see. Okay? But others totally will be different. Okay, others will be different. But the database normally will be in all the systems. Because no system can operate without that, right? Because you have to create all the database, all the stuff. Okay, so the database is But others will be different. Okay? Okay, so that is about the system organization. Okay, so system organization, basically we have a three... A system organization which is a repository, client, and layer. Okay? But the repository and the client is mostly used. Mostly used. Okay? So in your assignment, you can think. I think in your assignment part 1, right? Okay? Part 1, let me say good. So you have to choose the suitable or a uh, system organization model. Okay? Okay, the next one is a modular decomposition. Okay? Modular decomposition is a process of decomposing 
the subsystem into the modules. Remember in your assignment. In your assignment, you have to come out, okay? Most of you, most of you have already come out with the sub-modules, right? Okay, your main module and the main module, you have sub-modules, okay? So, this is what we call as a decomposition, okay? Modular decomposition, okay? So, as you can see here, it's a decomposite of the sub-system into modules, Okay, it's a components in modules. Okay, so when we talk about the modular decomposition, okay, we have two main strategies. Okay, two main strategies that you can decompose the subsystem. So what are the two strategies? One is the object-oriented decomposition. And the other one is a function-oriented decomposition. Okay. So when we talk about the object oriented decomposition is when you can see this. Okay, you have the class. Object class. Okay. For example, this one is for the invoice processing system. Okay. For the invoice processing system. So what are the class? How many class? How many class we have here? Four. Client, payment, invoice, receipt. Okay, so this is what we call as an object-oriented decomposition. Okay, understand? Okay, the next one is a function-oriented decomposition. The same, okay, the same invoice processing system in here you can see each each sub function okay invoice processing system okay here we have an invoice we have payment we have remind uh, sorry reminders we have receipt okay and each you can see here yeah, the connectivity the connectivity of the each function the sub modules okay you can see here yeah, if you want to, if you want to make the payment, okay, after you make the payment, okay, identify the payment, okay, then you have to issue the receipt, okay, then find the payment due, okay, issue the payment reminders, so you can see the connection, okay, so this is called as function oriented decomposition, so decomposition is basically is a sub modules, how the sub modules work together, okay, into the main module. Okay, so as you can see, invoice is a sub-module, payment is a sub-module, receipt is a sub-module, reminder is a sub-module. Okay? Okay. So just now we have talked about the system organization. Now the just now, uh, talk about the modular decomposition. The next activity, the next activity in the architectural design process is the control modeling. Okay? So when we talk about the control modeling, okay, I just uh, talk about this. Okay, when we talk about the control modeling, we have two types of control modeling. One is centralized control and the other one is the event-based control. Okay, what is the difference between centralized control and event-based control? Anyone? Centralized control and event-based control. What is centralized control? As you can see in here. At the center. Of course, at center, I mean central. Can you see one subsystem, one subsystem as overall responsibility, that means it has the overall responsibility to control, which is control mean here is it will start and it will stop. Okay? Other subsystem. Okay? In here, in here you can see 
is not in the main system it is controlling the subsystem the subsystem is controlling the subsystem the subsystem is controlling the subsystem okay for example i can give you okay can i erase this Okay, example, huh? okay, we have one module, uh, main module, payment module. Okay, payment module. Okay, so in the payment module, uh, okay, we have uh, uh, two subsystems. Okay, uh, which is payment option. Okay, payment option submodule. And then we have the uh, generic receipt. Okay, generic receipt. Okay, so as you can see in this um, diagram, okay, we are not going to talk about the payment module. Payment module is a main module. Inside the payment module, we have a two sub module, which is the payment options. And also we have the generic receipt. Okay. So, in here, if you see, if we, okay, if we make the payment only, the receipt will be generate. Right? Is that the receipt will be generate without we making the payment? No. Okay? So, in here, which module is controlling which module? Which module, which sub-module is controlling which sub-module? Yes, the payment option module is controlling the generic receipt module, right? So, in here, let's say, let's say you didn't make the payment, okay? You come to that part, okay? So, you maybe for example, uh, you buy anything from Lazada, okay? Then you choose and you add to cut. And then after that, you check out, right? You check out. Okay, then when you check out, so you have to make the payment or either it's online transaction or whatever, whatever. But let's say you didn't do that. You didn't perform that. Okay? Will you get the receipt out? Or the invoice out? No. You have to make the payment first. If you didn't make the payment, so it will stop automatically there. It will stop automatically there. Then you have to start from the beginning. Okay, understand? Until you didn't make the payment, nothing will come out. Nothing will come out. Okay, it won't generate. Here, which is controlling? The payment option module is controlling the general receipt module. Sub module. Okay? So in here, centralized control. Okay? So that is one. And the, okay, as you can see here. Okay? So this is how it works. Okay? The sequential. Okay, the next one is that, okay, this one all you can talk, you can, uh, you can read a uh, centralized control and do that. The other one is an even base. Even base control. Okay, just now centralized control, the next one is the even base. Even base, okay, in here, in here, until you make the payment, okay, you won't, it won't generate the receipt, but there is no time. There is no time. Okay, there is no certain time. Okay, you need to pay the payment, otherwise no. Okay? So you can make your own sweet time, okay? Then you can pay, okay? Nothing. Okay, you no need to, it like, uh, you no need to, it's it not like auto log out, then you have to log in back, nothing. Okay, it will stay there. 
Okay, after you make the payment, then you can do the proceed. You can proceed the next things. Okay, it won't stop you. But event based is not like that. Event based, as you can see, the response to the event from the other system or other environment be this certain time. Okay, in that particular time. The best example I can give you here is our intranet. Okay, when we access, okay, let's say for example, I put my username and password. Okay. Then I just leave it like that, okay? For example, I didn't operate, okay, a few minutes. I think you guys experienced that. Okay, I just leave it like this. Okay, a few seconds, a few minutes. When I want to click to view timetable, after that particular time expire, I cannot do that. So I have to go and log in back again. Right? Isn't it? Okay? So this is what we call as a even base control. Even base control. Okay. So you can see here. So each subsystem can be respond to the external generated events that might be come from other subsystem or environment. Okay. So this is the difference. Okay, between the control base and even base. Okay. So you can see here. Okay, so where we can apply this, we can apply in a real-time system, like for example, it's on the intranet, okay, we have the interrupt endless, okay, all these things. Okay, that's it, done. Okay, so this is the summary where just now we have talked about the system organization, okay, system architecture, Okay, so what is the benefit of the system architecture? And then we have talked about the process. Okay, these are the three process. Okay, these are the three process involved in the system architecture, which is the system organization, modular decomposition, and control modeling. Okay, inside the system organization, we have discussed three types of model, repository, client, and layer. Okay. And the next activity, which is a modular decomposition, we have talked about the object oriented and function oriented. And the third activity, which is a control modeling, we have talked about the centralized and event based. Okay? Any questions? Any questions, class? So, in your assignment, Okay, in your assignment, part 3, yes. Part 3, you can see an architecture design. Okay, so which you need to recommend and design one suitable, okay, uh, system organization model. Okay, which model that you want to choose is up to you. Either you want to choose a repository or client base or linear. Depends on what type of LMS or how it is going to work. Let's say if you um, uh, you choose a uh, maybe, okay for example uh, the LMS right the LMS that you choose you only going to use it in your uh, universities or is that your universities have many branches or is only one campus or you have many campus so think about it and you can decide okay which one that you want to choose that definitely the layer model you won't choose. <laughs> okay, so you can think of choosing a repository or client. Alright? Okay? Okay, the next, uh, the next, uh, what we call um, chapter is testing. Okay, next chapter is testing, which is next week. And then the following week will be your midterm. Okay, your midterm is week 9. Huh? Because, because I received a complaint. 
from the top management. Huh? Why? Somebody complain about me. Huh? Impossible. Yes. Somebody complain about me. I don't know who. <laughs> okay, so then I have to reschedule. Okay? So I have to reschedule the midterm uh, in week 9. Okay? There's no more uh, adjustment. Eh? Okay? So week 9, I think by week 9, most of your modules done. Midterm? Like that? No, we go graphic. No free programming. The research method. I don't know. I already fixed. <laughs> I already informed to the person in charge, okay, week 9 will be the meeting. Guys, okay, if you have any problems, okay, come and talk to me. <laughs> Why you want to complain? If, let's say, if you, compl if you talk to me, but I didn't take any action, I still like that, no changes, uh, then you go and talk. If you talk, if you talk, if you didn't tell me, you didn't talk to me, then how do I know? Okay, you come and talk to me personally or whatever, whatever. let's say I'm still like that, no changes, uh, then you can talk to the management. I'm so sad. <laughs> okay, but it's okay, no problem, no problem. Okay, take it easy. Don't worry, okay, I won't show my tempo all. Huh? Okay, very cool. Okay, uh, any other questions? Any questions, class? Okay, your midterm fix, uh, week 9, uh, today, now is week 7, okay, week 8, week 9. Okay, any other questions? Okay. So, no worries, okay. Uh, I think that this thing done. And then, uh, please do um, uh, finish up your assignment uh, until part 1, part 2 because next week we are going to move to part 3 already. Okay, make sure you complete your part 1 and part 2 first. Okay? Then we can move on to our part 3. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, no question, then I take the attendance now. <laughs> but 81, but I don't know how many of you are present here. Okay, uh, Abdullah, Fahim, okay, you are here. Why didn't you come for tutorial? <laughs>